sites on review tonight are the first pilot sites for Moratton, at Farm Road, Rally Gardens, El Nursing and Cannons. And these will deliver 93 homes and apartments uh, across the portfolio. <coughs> That's 83 apartments and 10 townhouses. Uh, <coughs> for the benefit of the panel members and the public is there this evening, uh, the applications are being validated at the moment, so they're not yet in planning to forward, but they will be next week. Uh, but actually, in the interest of open transparency, we've got less head of DRP deadline as an even set up. So, without much further ado, I'm going to hand over to Louise, who's going to talk in detail about the design evolution since the last review. And I think Farmer was the first one up. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, before I dive straight into Farmer, I thought I'd just make a few statements that are kind of applicable across all four sites. Um, so, as you know, uh, as Paul mentioned, that these sites have been developed predominantly for PRS combination, so you'll notice that in the, in the unit mix they're providing. Um, in terms of the energy strategy, it's something that came up at the last DRP as well, um, and it, it's, there's the same approach across all, across all sites, um, so I thought worth summarising now. Um, so form for a fabric first approach across all schemes, so looking for really good G values to minimise the requirement for space heating in the first place. Um, but then in terms of hot water and, and space heating that is required, we're form for electricity, but uh, hot water via air source heat, individual air source heat pump cylinders um, and space heating by uh, electricity. So we've um, I went through quite a thorough review of our um, energy uh, sustainability consultants and energy heat consultants to come up with this approach that um, kind of met the kind of right balance in terms of meeting um, ransom aspirations um, in terms of sustainability <coughs> but also in terms of management um, as well. Um, when looking at sustainability, we also considered building materials. Um, and the smaller schemes at Farm Road and Cannons um, are timber frame construction, so minimising uh, the use of concrete where, where we can. Um, and then also across all four sites, um, in terms of um, landscaping and trees, uh, we're, we're achieving a net gain of 21 trees across the four sites, and going each by the site, uh, site by site as well. So um, Farm Road is uh, the first scheme representing. So this is uh, the, the site that's currently got a derelict church on it um, in kind of quite suburban area of Morden. I um, thought probably worth just summarising some of the key points we had at the last DRP and in the book that you received we had a kind of a contrast of where we were before and where we are now. Um, so some of the key points that came up last time were um, around the form of the roof, so kind of uh, uh, requesting that kind of look at, that was looked at in a bit more detail and the form of that refined a bit more. Um, the need for 100% dual aspect units was also raised. Um, so there were a few, I think four or so units that weren't dual aspect um, at the time. <coughs> and also um, a preference for as well, inclusion, inclusion of some electric vehicle charging spaces. So in response to that, um, I'll, I'll move on to we'll start with the roof form first. So um, the second board here kind of has a bit more of our detailed design development that we've been looking at over the last few months. Um, just to recap on the kind of main concept of, of the, this design, so we're looking at um, a apartment block on the corner of Farm Road and Combermere Road, um, and then a row of terraces along Combermere Road, which kind of continues the alignment of terraces um, on that street. Um, we, but, so we're proposing an apartment block here where a lot of the surrounding con immediate context is terraced houses, so we want to design the apartment block and the houses to be very much sympathetic in terms of the kind of surrounding building forms and this reality. Um, so that's where we kind of developed this folded pitch roof for the apartment block, and the form that we've uh, developed for that block is also continued on the uh, terrace of houses as well. So we've looked at um, 
in developing the floor, we kind of have achieved quite a steep pitch roof um, <coughs> profile towards the street, and that kind of slopes gently back to achieve a, a kind of lower eaves line towards the rear of the development. Um, and then that roof form is then punctuated with um, dormer windows, so that's to enable the, that top floor to be inhabited and um, get sufficient daylight, etc. Um, the form of that block is then further broken down by uh, the cutouts that form private amenity spaces, so balconies. Um, and those, those are kind of more, I say, more prominent element when we park the blocks. Those are framed with um, these uh, bronze powder coated um, metal cowls. Um, as I said, the, then the houses, the row of terrace of houses next to the apartment block, has a similar <coughs> roof form, um, also punctuated with the, uh, with the dormer windows, but we've um, opted to go for kind of a more uh, featured dormer window on the apartment, on the houses, um, and that's kind of um, shown in this, this kind of detail here. Um, and that, the kind of materiality of, of that, the dormers and the kind of cows around the balconies are the same, so both the kind of bronze, bronze metal. Um, uh, a comment also that did come up in terms of the amenity space for the building was um, whether the gardens for, for the houses would be overlooked by the apartment block. So what we've tried to do there is um, use the kind of metal framing around the windows to angle views away from the gardens and more towards the open space to the north of the site. So again, it's kind of pulled out in this detail here how, how that framing is, is kind of projected further on one side to kind of um, encourage views um, towards the open space um, to the north of the site. Um, so the point about uh, dual aspect units, uh, we, um, so this is, these are kind of our overall building plans, and you might have noticed in the pack that the internal circulation for the apartment block is now kind of fully open um, on one side, so this is a kind of a fully ventilated internal um, circulation space, which means that we can get um, an internal window for this unit here, which would otherwise be dual aspect, um, and then all the other units are dual aspect, so we've got a corner unit on the side, and then two through apartments on um, each side, and obviously the house is dual aspect as well. So we'd like to address, address that comment um, through refining our layout. Um, and then in terms of the um, electric car parking space, uh, charging spaces, um, as per I think, the scheme that we presented at last time, we've got two uh, car parking spaces for the wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. parking uh, units, and then we've got um, a, a space per townhouse well, so off street, um, uh, in front of each house. Um, and so um, the approach is to provide um, at least kind of one charging um, point uh, for these park parking spaces, which then potentially could have more than one kind of, uh, charging point within it. So I think that those are the kind of main points that came up last time. So I might just then continue just to explain a bit more how the scheme is developed in general. So. Um, I'll pick up on materiality, we've got some samples down here. So the main materiality that we're uh, proposing here is terracotta hung tiles. Um, yeah. So the terracotta hung tile um, actually comes from the neighbouring house, um, which is just here. So that it's kind of a, a bit of an anomaly in terms of the surrounding context, so it doesn't form part of the terrace uh, like the surrounding houses. And um, the top part of that has got this kind of terracotta hung tile, which was really very nice feature, quite quite unique and uh, could create quite a kind of special uh, feature on the corner of this site. Um, and then the remainder of the uh, buildings are red brick. So that's um, very much, <laughs> very much um, the main materiality of the houses along Farm Road. So kind of picking up on on that materiality. And as I said, all the metal work to be a kind of bronze colour, which complements these two materials really well. Um, and then I guess finally just point towards the two kind of views that we've developed showing how the proposal sits in context. So one along Compromere Road and one along Farm Road. Um, and I think the, um, this view here and, and also the elevation on uh, Compromere Road picks up um, how the kind of mass steps down towards the existing surrounding context, which also responds to the um, quite significant level change across, um, along Compromere Road as well. So that stepping is read quite clearly. Um, and so we've chosen to do the, that kind of change in level between the houses and the park block to kind of re-identify those as two separate kind of elements of the scheme and further emphasise that with the shallow gap. So we kind of read as, as their own elements. So. Ten seconds left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that's 
a very brief summary, there we are, so hopefully we'll capture some of the comments from last time. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're going to spend the next 10 minutes going around the panel uh, asking questions. <laughs> Claire? Yep. Um, some kind of general questions on your sustainability process. Yes, yeah. Um, <coughs> individual air traffic markets with electric radio. <laughs> So uh, the communal air source heat pump solution wouldn't work for these schemes because of how we're to manage them. Um, individual air source um, kind of fans we did explore, but we just uh, the, there was a way we can make them work with the elevations. They'd be quite quite interesting, so I guess, uh, having to put an external wall. Um, so this um, cylinder is is a solution that works with individual units. Doesn't kind of require. Um, a, communal system at all, mm. um, but it does only work for hot water. So it, it's just it's just that there isn't a system yet that works individually for each unit that does both hot water and mm. heating as well. Can you help me? Where are they located? So they're located in, in each unit's um, utility cupboard, so um, they should be on the drawing oh, okay. So, so the actual, actual heat finished. exchange happens where? Um, at, in, in the cylinder itself. Um, Has it got an MBA car? Yeah, on the yeah. Okay. So it's sucking so air it's in yeah. doing the heat exchange as a temperature. Yeah, okay. so that's um yeah, unit by unit. Um Okay. Have you have you just on that, have you investigated the the fields for residents based on that? In terms of their radiators? Yeah, so that was part of the uh, overall assessment that we did, um, and and on balance, this was deemed to be the the best option. Um, windows, mm -hmm. are they double glazed or triple glazed? Double glazed. With the value of one for one. Yeah, so um, well, yeah, we, we've been looking. We're talking <coughs> manufacturers at this point now, actually, as just as we're kind of moving into the detailed design stage. So um, I think there's some that might be able to achieve that. If not, we've um, be an option to up the value of the rules and to compensate if all the other is slightly lower. But if our any people sell this in front of that calculation, we can learn what we still achieve the overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the floor and the roof, I noticed the you already said you mentioned the rule pattern. Yeah, just, <laughs> just <laughs> a summary. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have them on me, but yeah, yeah they'll be part of the, well, they are, I think, some of this is part of the application. But you know, when you say they are achieved, so we, um, we're over the thirty percent improvement of our building mix, and I think it is in the. I put the actual percentage in some yeah. of the document. It varies slightly yeah. site by site, but it's generally between yeah. thirty and forty. Yeah. Michael, I like it. I mean, I've, I've got a couple of questions. Um, I think in the last design review, we talked about the height and corner. Um, and in the model, um, there, I think you had that last one, just to a certain extent, anyway. Yeah. The building across Farm Road seems a lot higher than the others, and yet you've not sort of played on that much in your in your sections. Because people will say it's, it's, it's all in the corner, but in, yeah. in, in, in this model, it looks like it's you know, top of your building, similar in height to the top of the building across Farm Road, and then there's other two buildings across Farm Road. But in, in this, it's kind of concentrating on the ones down. Down okay, that way, which is sloping away and not yeah. particularly high, just as a way to kind of defend your yeah, your, yeah. Your, your tall corner. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not entirely convinced by the windows and the little little kind of, uh, angled frames. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's going to make anyone look that way. I think they'll still just look straight down into the garden. Um, I think the way to do that is actually to angle the whole the glass in the window yeah. to force people to look out. The way I make that more of a blue, and a big view. Um, materiality, um, I, don't, I don't mind the terracotta and stuff. I mean, in, in the view you've got down there, I understand <coughs> the point about Farm Road, mm -hmm. but the, you know, your terrace is kind of more related to the buildings on, um, on the other road, uh, and yet it's not, you, know, you could use a nice buff or something like that on that building. 
something a bit different just to yeah. break up the, the redness I mean, I of it. Yeah, I mean, common mirror is, is yeah, you're right in the buff brick, but the rest of the white plastic is questions rather than I get to the. I wonder whether that'd be the more questions. I think, yeah, we looked at this. This is a scheme together, and how they, yeah, they are one scheme. So we wanted them to relate to each other, and that's why materiality for those three. Okay. This is a question for quite more interesting. I like the design. I like the materiality, and I think of some of the points of relevance later. The question is, what, can you explain the quality of space that you're creating for people on the ground floors, particularly the gardens, the yeah. some living rooms on the corners? How are you dealing with those spaces? So, um, we've worked hard with our landscape architects to make sure that, um, that the landscape does create a, a high quality buffer and does create this privacy for the ground floor units. Um, I mean, I suppose in terms of building alignment, it was very much set by kind of keeping, keeping the alignment of adjacent buildings, but that um, has resulted in actually the building being set back quite far from the pavement edge. So we do have very generous spaces between the pavement and the, and the building. Um, generally, so in most cases, the ground floor units have, have their immunity to the rear of the building. So it wasn't possible for just yeah. So it, it, obviously this unit on the corner doesn't have a connection directly to the back. So it this is kind of the, the primary meeting space, but this is why it kind of created a much wider landscape buffer, kind of particularly on this corner um, compared to elsewhere. Um, there's also some taller um, shrubs and trees on that corner. That kind of picked up on the on the view there. Um, yeah, so primarily doing it through the landscape. <coughs> yeah, we've got the yeah, access right out to the meter space. So. Yes. Marcus? Question. The townhouses have what you call feature dormers, <coughs> which are very tall. Are they the space above the window <coughs> head to the roof? Is that? We haven't got a section, so I can't yeah. see how tall the ceilings are in there. Is that a kind of there for a reason, or is it is that in other words, you know, is, do you need that oversized splayed soffit panel above the window head in order to get adequate ceiling heights internally? And um, so it has resulted in um, in slightly more generous ceiling heights at the front of the block, in front of the houses to the rear. Um, so can I ask a simple yeah. question? What is the ceiling height? Um, in sections, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, um, it's 2.5 2 at the rear, but it slopes, yeah. it slopes up. So it'll be 2.6 to 2.5 at the front. Okay, so that in that short, place. they get the benefit of that feature yeah. dormant. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay, so. good, thank you. Yeah. Um, second question, bronze powder coated metal. I see these wonderful CGI's of this sort of seamless sheet of bronze going up three, six, nine meters without a single joint on it. What is it? Is it wood fiber that's had a spray paint on it? Is it real bronze? Is it polyester powder coated aluminium? How is it going to be neater? It'll be a uh, aluminium. I think it would, I mean the trouble with CGI's is that people genuinely think that's what it's going to look like. Naive, I know. But, so I think it would kind of give greater credibility to them if you could just model those little 10 millimeter joints. Mm -hmm. And I kind of question longevity of this type of building, but that's perhaps for the comment thing. Um, have you checked your uh, south facing glazing, a lot of big south 
facing windows. I'm quite, quite sensitive to that. Yeah, we've had overheating calculations carried out. And yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay, thank you. Could do that. Um, so the one beds are around about 50 square metres. Um, the two beds are slightly over the minimum of 70 square metres. Um, like I noticed they've always got two bathrooms um, to the make of the RS um, market. So they're generally around uh, 72 square metres. When you say around 50, do they meet the standards? Oh yeah, they meet, yeah, definitely not for the okay. <laughs> to the review, main review of the uh, section now, uh, where the members will give you their comments, advice, and members. So, Michael, seeing you start, so I'll uh, uh, start with you. I'm not convinced by the windows at the side of the different government so I don't know. I love it. Um, I mean, I, I, I think about great words, it's, it's just a question, really, whether it's conducted <coughs> at all, because you've got a movement join what's a gap between the two buildings anyway. Yeah. So you've already got an automatic way of separating the two. Um, yeah. It's all going to talk about Farm Road, but I just think, I just think the buildings on the other road need to think about as well. Yeah, the, the typology's changed, so could the community be able to change as well? And some of the some other schemes as well, Pat, you've done a bit more with brickwork than you have on the terrace houses. Uh, there's no, no perforated brick or Brick tunnel end, but there's quite a bit of brick. <coughs> yeah, there's only one, there's one big window and one quite small window on that elevation. Uh, I just wondered whether there was a way you could just do a bit of something. Maybe, maybe the only dorm is enough. Um, but um, I, I, I don't really have any major crystals. I think it's a nice skill. Okay. Uh, Kadula, are you going to speak to So this house does have a window on that facade. Um, so and, and this this dormer isn't very visible because there's not much of a gap between the buildings. But this one we have this dormer is so yeah this um, end wall is big wall is a lot more visible from the street. So we have done a few more things on that wall to to bring this up. I think as you're walking up the street oh. to feel that you kind of also oh, the, no, the, the gardens. Oh yeah. yeah. But you're right, that's why I'm asking. I think I agree with you about the blank wall and I think if you could get even if it's I can't remember how the plan works there, but even if you could get a light to a circus or a light to a bathroom, yeah. you know, you're actually over the lifetime of the building you're saving quite a bit of and it's better quality light. Well, again, I mean, uh, I think it's moved in the right direction, and I think it kind of be quite interested in what you think of us in terms of the advice we gave you last time, whether that's actually been helpful, because you've taken most of it on board, and I think it's made the scheme better. I mean, one thing you didn't mention was the sort of lowering of the roof line at the back to get a bit more sky views to the garden. I think that's good. It all seems quite wholesome. I don't have a problem with the scale. I take your point about the lift. I know we ask, you know, should they not all be accessible? But the majority of them are, so, you know, it's not a huge building, so I can understand that. I don't really particularly agree with my colleague about break, changing brick. I mean, it, it's not a huge building. <coughs> and my <coughs> slight concern, I mean, there was a fashion for kind of using as many different materials as possible to break up big buildings and make them look as though they're accreted over time. I don't think this, I, th I think that's a kind of slightly 
it's not a very authentic way to do a building, to change material just for that. I, take, I mean, I wouldn't I don't totally disagree with that. I can see that. But anyway, I wouldn't change the materials for their own sake. And I, I personally, I wouldn't add lots of fancy brickwork for its own sake. I think fancy brickwork in 10 years' time, they'll say, whoops, that's, that's you know, 2018 or whatever it is. And, you know, by the time the pigeons... Now, that's the point. Have you got swift boxes? What, in terms of biodiversity, have you really pushed that agenda? Have you got swift, swift boxes in your building? We have got swift boxes, um, predominantly in the boundary walls. Right. But otherwise, yeah, I think it's a sensible and nicely designed scheme. Okay. Um, I think it's a lovely design scheme. I'm concerned that when you actually go to costs, you look at brown bronze windows, they turn out to fall to what you think, and I think you really need to be careful about that. Um, I agree about the minimal um, detailing, <coughs> but I am concerned that that does require a lot of skills and really pull it off. You know, I was looking at Damien Hurst Gallery open book tour today, and that's done brilliantly. Things like that at that level, yes. Um, I'm not convinced about the corner space, and <coughs> I will be questioning on all of them. But my concern is what is the quality of life that you are creating for people, particularly in the harshest parts of the scheme? So, my comment would be if you are relying on landscaping, landscaping grows and dies. Maybe you want to make sure that someone in the building puts some boundary fencing up there to be sure. Just design what the reality of what it's going to be. Other than that, I think it's a lovely thing. Thank you. Uh, Claire? Uh, yeah, I think it's a lovely thing. I'd just say, just a comment on all of the submissions. I think it's really, really helpful to look at last time's comments and then what you've done. That was really mm. helpful and it's good to And the comments rather than the questions. Uh, not convinced by the angled windows. Could the brick, brick change in colour on Farm Road? Could go either way. Could there be some more perforated brick? Could go either way. Flank wall, blank flank walls, they're set back. Could we add windows or something useful to those? Good that swift boxes are included not convinced about the corner space and the quality of life for the people who live in that corner flat. Maybe we could add a garden gate there to help the landscaping. Then you won't get 1.15 view value on your double glazing it, but we think you'll find it another way. Can I also add a comment? I like the tile hanging. Tile hanging in timber frame is actually a really smart way to do modern low-rise housing because it's all recyclable. And I'll ask this more in hope than expectation. 
but if you use lime mortar, your bricks would be recyclable at the end of the building's life. And, you know, it means you have to build it in, not through the winter, and it means you have a little bit of extra cost. But it's one of the craziest things that our industry does, which is to use cement mortar in bricks. So if you could look at that as part of your sustainability strategy, that would be great. But that's all. Um, I think, the other, sorry, you haven't had it overall feeling, I think, from everybody, was that it's a nice thing. Um, so this is quite a few weeks of verdict. Um, I'll open it up to all the panel and see if we can come with a, a common verdict <coughs> on this. I think it's green, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> from our last DRP on Elm Nursery. Um, so this is a car park site um, more in Mitcham Town Centre, um, so not such a suburban context as Farm Road. Um, and as you'll see from the kind of site photos, the kind of context in this area is, is quite variable. There's not much coherence. There's a range of apartment blocks, um, retail uh, units, commercial buildings um, along London Road, and we've got a kind of large food warehouse next to our site. Um, so, yes, yeah, so some of the key points from the last DRP, there was um, concern about the quality of um, some of the units that had bedrooms facing the main roads. The Belton Road is a very busy, busy road. Um, there were a number of single aspect units. Um, there was concern about the scale of the building in relation um, to the neighbours to the river site, which are, um, again, two-storey houses. Um, comments about the quality of the entrance sequence into the building, which wasn't considered to be very welcoming. Um, and then uh, kind of query, um, a request that kind of has to be developed for the design more detail that we kind of considered every single elevation um, in relation to its um, specific context. Um, and then there, there was kind of a question about the overall massing um, and how the building sat within the site and um, in relation to the wide context along London Road. Um, so I'll kind of close off the easy ones first. So in terms of the um, comments about bedrooms facing onto the roads, we've replanned units, um, so now there are no bedrooms that have a sing just a, a single aspect towards the road. They all have a kind of aspect to the sides. Um, we've done a lot of work um, in developing the mass of this building to again, really um, make sure we're not overshadowing or overlooking the homes to the rear. So um, I think some of these uh, massing diagrams show, show it the best. So um, you're going to see that there's a main building that sits to the front of the site, but then there's um, a number of terraces to the rear, um, rear of the site. So um, it's obviously bringing the height of the building down a lot further towards the rear of the site to avoid kind of overlooking and overshadowing. Um, and we've also kind of addressed this in the balcony detail as well. Um, so the balconies and terraces to the rear of the building um, have got solid parapets, um, but then railings uh, to either side, so it's not the balconies aren't kind of too solid and don't look out too much light to the internal layouts. Um, in terms of single aspect units, um, fortunately we do still have two single aspect units. Um, we did develop, develop any options for the kind of overall layout of the building to try and avoid this but they're kind of constrained to the site, so they're kind of quite tight. The, the shape of it and the kind of aspect of it meant that there are kind of two units um, just on the ground floor on the first floor that are single aspect. Um, we've obviously had this scheme to be tested for daylight and sunlight, 
um, and overheating, um, and there isn't an issue with these units, they still have sufficient daylight and they don't suffer from <coughs> any overheating. That's just um, the, the only two units actually in all four schemes that seem that way. Um, in terms of the entrance arrangement, again, we've kind of reworked this in quite a lot of detail. So um, I think previously the, the entrance was, yeah, the entrance was uh, more on the side elevation. We've moved it around to the uh, London Road elevation so it's much more prominent. Um, the, there's lots of glazing on, on the doors and also kind of windows uh, adjacent to the lobby to fill that space with light. Um, and then the main circulation space on the upper floors, again, is naturally lit, so it's got windows at either end, so we naturally get naturally ventilated. Um, and then in terms of how the building sits on the site, um, you'll notice that it, uh, sorry, I think the shape has kind of widened a bit since, since we last presented it, but it is, we, we haven't deviated from the kind of overall concept of this being a kind of an urban block on the street. Uh, we wanted to respect uh, distances to um, Leap Court, which is uh, adjacent to our site, and also we wanted to kind of maintain and improve the existing pedestrian route that runs kind of along the north of our site along here. So we've kind of kept, well, enhanced the route in terms of kind of its finish and opened it up through the positioning of, of the mass. Um, but what we felt was really important was kind of how, how the building is read from the street. Um, and again, kind of the landscaping and boundary treatment has been really important in this. So um, the boundary treatment along London Road is a, effectively a continuation of the existing wall that in, encloses the estate adjacent to our site. Um, um, and the existing boundary wall there's um, got kind of planting um, within it. So we've kind of uh, developed similar treatments along. So um, hopefully, okay, yeah, but it's um, that kind of boundary treatment along London Road continues along the front of our site. Um, and again, we've kind of looked at how we can make sure that the planting along the space um, really is defensible so that ground floor units um, have a buffer between London Road and their units, but also along um, this pedestrian pathway as well um, and the units. So just trying to maintain privacy and kind of quality of space in there. Um, so I think that they're the kind of main key responses to um, the, the DRP conference from last, um, last time round. Um, I might just talk a bit more again about how we've further developed the design. So um, I talked a bit just then about how we've kind of fragmented the mass, particularly to the rear of the development, uh, to respect the um, neighbouring homes beyond. We've also looked to break down the mass of the building itself through kind of further articulation. So um, the balconies um, on the kind of four main corners of the block are expressed as cutouts. So if I uh, kind of read in this elevation, so again, further breaking down that mass um, into kind of smaller portions. Um, and then on um, actually where we've got the uh, natural light and ventilation to the corridor, that's also expressed as a recess on the external elevations. So that kind of really kind of breaks down some of the longer elevations, um, uh, particularly this one along a bit in front of you along London Road, which is shown here. Um, and I think that the last thing I think we had started to think about how we would express the roof form. So we're quite um, quite keen to create a bit more interest. Um, at the roof level, and that is actually something that we did notice happens at a few places along London Road. Um, so we've achieved that through this uh, kind of folding of the external walls of that top floor. Um, and again, this is picking up on the DRP comment from last time, um, thinking about how how each facade relates to its, its kind of immediate context. So we have on that elevation, but also again further breaks up that elevation into kind of smaller bays, which helps with kind of reading the portions of that building. Um, and then I guess, so this elevation is the one um, that faces the footpath that runs to our site, which you do actually get quite a clear view of along London Road because of um, how far set, set back the, the kind of food store is adjacent to our site. So on this elevation, again, we've looked at how we break, break down the form, but instead of the kind of projecting fins, it's actually um, achieved here through recesses. Um, so, um, yeah, I think see how the kind of two, two elevations have similar concepts but kind of slightly different treatment. Um, in terms of the materiality, okay, I'll just grab these. Um, so, there's quite a range of um, brick colours along uh, London Road. So, we've opted to go for this um, blend, which has got 
tones of red and brown in it, which we thought would be um, quite a kind of nice balance in terms of, kind of the surrounding materiality. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then um, chose to use a contrasting brick for the recesses, so actually gone for a, a more reflective glazed brick, which should help uh, kind of fix up similar tones that are in the kind of um, main brick, but the reflectiveness should kind of help out um, lights around um, in those kind of recessed parts of the building. CGI's, sorry to be so literal, it looks as though you're cantilevering balconies on the London Road elevation are made of brick. Is this a clever surrealist trick or is it because someone's got their own texture on it? Um, yeah, in fact the, what should be in front of those is the, the balustrade kind of uh, messy panel that pass in front of the concrete slab. I mean, if the concrete slab is just left bare, it would look white, wouldn't it? Which would yeah. sort of take away from your broody bronze demeanour. So, you, do you mean? Do you mean? I mean, those face? those would come out like little flashes. They'd be yeah, like little yeah. epaulets, like eyelashes yeah. in the building. Um. Yeah, we're we're planning on leaving them exposed, but we are we're planning for the. Put a bit of bronze. For the, yeah, the, the bronze station for the, of the okay, balustrade to come that's fine. Down I understand, I understand, understand it. Um, bronze brick. I mean, I'm sort of half know the answer to this, but I'll still ask the question. Why bronze? Um, I mean, the reason I ask that question is it could be that there's a north facing elevation, a lot of the time in shadow. It could be that this building might look a bit kind of. Because yeah. um, that's ex that's a high, that's <coughs> a expensive item, isn't it? Yeah. No, I don't know how much they are each. About five quid each, those bricks or something. Yeah. They're a lot. Yeah. So if you're doing that, why bronze? I mean, another way of doing it would be to introduce a flash of brightness or colour. There. I just. Yeah. I mean, so we we did um, consider that, but we. I actually wanted to find a brick that complemented the body brick um, well, so we feel that this brick does pick up some of the kind of more purple tones in the kind of body brick pretty well. Um, it is dark, um, but I think in different lights it does pick up a kind of, like has a kind of lighter shade to it as well. That's fine. I mean, it's just a question. Yeah, we did consider colour, but we, but we did try it on the animations, but it didn't. What happens on the roof? Um, <coughs> as in what's on top of it? What, what, what happens on it? Is it just for pigeons or does it have uh, photovoltaics or is it a community space? Or is it um, no, it's uh, just a flat roof. Is that a bit of a waste, Claire? Yeah, is there any... Is it even a green roof? Or? No, it's R not. Blue it's roof? Or? No. So it's kind of sun filled or something? Single ply, grey yeah. single ply membrane. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it, there's no use, there's no access up there. I'll sort of it to see. Okay, we might come back to that in the comments section. And my last question, so I've got a lot, but I might as well ask. You can more. use my phone because I have so many questions. <laughs> the south, the south side where we're mediating in scale from the London Road back to the lower residential units and their yeah. private gardens at the back. What are the setback distances at ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor? Mm -hmm. And are they adequate? Setback um, from the building line, setback from the adjacent? Setback, back to back distances from facing windows and the building. So at ground floor, and that's where it's the worst case, it's 18 metres, but there's actually no visibility there because we've got kind of boundary walls and fences along there. Um, on the next floor up, it um, increases to, uh, and I'm talking about the kind of pinch points there, um, it's about 21 metres. And then on the upper floors, it's, um, it's kind of even beyond that, so probably up to about 25 metres. So okay, that's pretty much at the limit 
I would say, where you need to start thinking about mitigation for privacy. I mean, a lot of local authorities use a rule of thumb of 20 metres, or some use 21 metres back to back. And then they increase the setbacks as you go further up. So, again, it's not a massive problem, but I just wanted to bring that yeah. to this building. <coughs> Uh, I have a similar question about the, the corner because they look really lovely in the, in the image. But just coming with how would you detail where the break in those bricks needs and how do you make sure that that doesn't become too different block so that it still reads as this nice entity where you're cutting in and you're folding. Yeah. I mean, it's just a challenge in the detail. So junction between the, the main brick and the... No, well, these, these corners with the, you know, the corners. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could actually use those bricks and tile, tile the edges of the you know. I think it, because that this yeah. will be, become really important for the building to work. Yeah, right yeah. There. I mean, definitely you want these kind of corners to be read as cutouts. So, I mean, it, it, my initial thoughts are that the main brick would kind of continue around the corner, so you'd read, read that reveal, and, yeah. and then the glazed brick can start up in that. So kind of expressing the kind of thickness of those external walls. Oh, um, yeah. And why is the did I miss that in the practice? Then why is the top floor so much higher? Um. Yeah. So yeah. It's just you know, the parapet. <coughs> the parapet to like protect the single ply membrane. Yeah, that's why, that's why I thought it would be used because yeah. like the parapet just needs to be like how thick is it? Five hundred. Yeah. Um. Sorry, you had what photo of those? in a really horrible, harsh environment. And I actually disagree with everyone about the dark brick, because you're going to get a lot of soot, a lot of cars. It's, it's, it's horrible being around there at those times, because I job around there, so I know it really well. <laughs> um, so I think you've done very well, particularly moving the flats around. Uh, on the front, you've addressed the issues on the back. I wasn't here for the previous one. And I think it will stand the test of time and weather well. I think it's a very good piece of architecture. Um, you have clearly addressed every side and you've taken on board the you know, comments. Um, the roof bit, well, I don't know, that 
that's that's down to you, the architect. Um, the only thing I would question, which has I don't think you fully utilise, is that crinkle. Does that come through on the inside of the flat so they get the benefit, or is it just a town planning architectural nicety? It's yeah, it's not expressed. Seems like a lost opportunity. Yeah, we did. 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 And he said, why didn't you play the flute instead? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I think really good. Marcus? Yeah. Marcus. 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 Well, okay. Um, again, I think it's... You've listened to what we said before. I hope you found it useful. The scheme looks better. I don't mind the bronze. <coughs> I was asking why. <laughs> But I don't mind it. I mean, the thing is, it's not Collier's Wood, so they're not going to say it's the Crown of Root Tower. I think Collier's Wood, you have to be really careful about brown buildings, just because of the history they've got there. Um, I think in many ways it's a very successful scheme. My big disappointment is about... I can understand that you might start off with something and then value engineering, sorry, then do cost cutting. Because value engineering and cost cutting are completely different things. But you might find through a series of cost cuttings that you end up with a single pine membrane with 1100 mil parapet. At which point I think it's time to just kind of wonder. You know, you may have taken a series of very rational steps that have taken you into a rather strange place. And at that point, it's the time to go back and say, hang on a second. Over the lifetime of this building, given our sustainability agenda, given that we are the borough developing on behalf of the borough, we want to get the sterling prize next time, and all this sort of stuff. Is that taking this quality of design thinking through to its right conclusion? So that's my big disappointment. Um, I can, the other comment I'll make, which probably won't surprise you, is that I think the Mitcham Society will probably think it's a bit too tall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's objectively true that it's a bit too tall or not, I don't know. But if you couple that with your 1100 mil of surplus brickwork that you might or might not need, that might influence the way that you deal with the height. Um, but yeah, I think uh, what kind of what I like about it is that it's it's taking elements of public housing which were done in an era where the public did try and do things properly, i.e. pre thatcher you know, where if it was us doing it for ourselves, we would try and do it really well, instead of the theory that says, well, it's for poor people, so let's do it really cheaply. It, and it's, it's sitting next to buildings that were born in that spirit, and it actually seems to be taking that agenda up again, so I think the whole plant body, as well as the architect, should be applauded for that high ambition. But I would love to see it kind of taken right through. But otherwise, I think it's fine. Thank you. Could I agree with the comments also. I mean, maybe the 1100 tills in the future, possibly, would be a new way of looking at the material, especially when this arose. Sometimes it's um, triple days because there's not that much more expensive anymore, I think. Maybe it's 
especially into common sort of busy roads, and people can have double glazing towards that road and then have slightly worse when you're around the corners. Summary as well. Yes. A successful scheme done well addressed the issues of the ban. Very good piece of architecture. Crinkle is not expressed internally. Roof is the big disappointment. Disappointed it's not used. Could make it green or biodiverse, make it a brown roof. Could use PV, could leave that open as a possibility over the lifetime of the building. Uh, single aspect, well, if your overheating counts are done, we can accept it. Um, lovely building, like it, you've done what we asked you at the last review. Balcony might be dark, but it might not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and so, general verdicts. Uh, the same colour as the roof, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go around, or we just do a general... Yeah, green. Green. Yeah. Green. Yeah. Same colour as the roof should be. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would give them a light grey. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> green. 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 Excellent. Green. Um, so that's two done. Um, if anybody wants to come for a break, it's a good time to do it now.
Oh, I'm sorry, it's the one with the picture. Yeah.
layout plan and centre here. So um, you'll see kind of a, a kind of big change that we've made since the the last presentation was well we've kept the, kind of a similar overall form that kind of, kind of stepped form that responds to the site boundary. We have kind of worked quite hard to um, slim down this building quite a lot and we've also pulled apart the, the two elements. So where we have the step in height um change the elevation from five to six stories, there's actually a kind of um, a, a physical break if you like between the two buildings which um, I think helps kind of break down the overall massing of, of this development, avoiding kind of too much of a kind of wall of development along many gardens. Also lets um, lots of natural light into the circulation space. Um, and because there's windows um, on both ends, um, it should get some kind of glimpses of, of landscape um, through the site as well, particularly from Rally Gardens um, towards the rear. Um, so yeah, this kind of through this refinement of form, this is also um, results in much shorter corridors um, and also 100% dual aspect units as well. Um, and then another benefit is that um, by kind of really slimming down the form, um, we've maxim well, achieved um, again a pinch point, 18 metres from um, the coastal point of our building to um, the line of the court beyond. Um, but again, um, just pointing out that uh, this side of the court is kind of the access deck to these units, um, to the front doors and the bathroom. So, um, in terms of kind of overlooking, if you like, their the main living spaces and looking out onto the other side of their buildings. Um, in terms of um, so the comment about the kind of space that we had here, which previously was the main access to the cycle store, we've actually moved the um, main kind of cycle store to the front of the development. So um, most residents will come, will access the building from um, Rally Gardens. There is um, a, a, a bit of public, well, well not public, well, sorry, but a parking area and landscaping to the rear of the development here. Um, this parking area is just for the use of this unit, which is located uh, directly adjacent to it. So that's um, a, a wheelchair parking space for, for a, an accessible unit. Um, but again, that's kind of that space is a lot wider than it was previously, um, so a lot more um, generous landscaping in this space as well. Um, so on the kind of scale of the development, so we've included um, a wider context uh, uh, plan uh, for this uh, area, um, as well as a bit of an analysis. So this little diagram here is very small, but shows that this site, um, this half up site, is at the junction of quite a few different character areas. Um, and you can kind of see it through the figure grounds of, of this town as well. So to the north is Mitchell Town Centre, which has got very kind of typically quite large footprint buildings, which are um, a bit of kind of medium to low in height. Um, and, but immediate to the immediate to the south, we've got um, Veek Court, which is a kind of typical kind of post 1940s estate, which are, the buildings are kind of a lot, lot smaller smaller footprints than the kind of commercial buildings, but generally a lot taller in height and set around kind of landscape so you can see kind of the buildings a lot more spaced out to the south. And then to the sides, a bit further away from our sites, you've got the kind of terrace residential context rather than the commercial context to the north. Um, so our building height really does kind of relate to the heights of the court. So our kind of five and six storeys relate to their, their, their kind of vary from four to, to seven storeys within the wider state. So in terms of height, we're not kind of towering above anything in the kind of immediate context. Um, and as I said, through our kind of development of the plan form, the building has actually become, the building has become more slender and kind of broken up than as we presented it last time. Um, I think that's kind of the main comments, uh, responses to the comments from last time. So again, I'll just move on to the kind of main kind of design development that we've um, been carrying out for the last few months. So uh, we've maintained the pitch through forms that we had at the last presentation. Um, and these um, kind of relate to what's going on inside. So on this smaller block, you see it's kind of well, both the off-centre pitches, which relate to kind of where party walls are beyond. So on this block here, you've got two units, uh, whereas on this block here, you've got your circulation for and units at the end. So we're quite keen to kind of express that externally. Um, and then as well as the kind of roof pitches expressing that, we've also got this facade grid, which um, the main um, verticals of which align with um, what's happening beyond. Um, and then the, the horizontals we've used as a way to kind of break down the overall mass. 
So we kind of wanted to um, create some more vertical emphasis. So we've gone for uh, two-storey window groupings for our, um, our horizontal banding on this grid. Um, and we've also played with the floor to ceiling height. So we've got more generous floor to ceiling heights at ground floor, um, which can help with the overall building proportions as you get the building, um, and also needs us kind of big windows at, at ground floor as well, so you get more, more light in. Um, so that's kind of the primary grid that's set out. And then within that primary grid, we've got a secondary grid, which is where we wanted to introduce a bit more interest. So as you see from the plans, the, the floor plans stack very regularly. Um, but we wanted to, but we use our secondary grid and our windows to um, kind of shift the, the, the secondary vertical element. So it's kind of you get this variation um, across each band. Um, and then we've added depth of interest to kind of further elements such as the recessed balconies. Um, we've also got here we do have some um, brickwork detailing. So we've got um, hit and miss sawtooth brick detail on um, some of the balconies where we wanted to create a bit of privacy but obviously still let light through. Um, and we've used similar brickwork on the um, on the circulation floor just to identify that as something different to the apartments and the hotels there. Um, so the uh, well, context we used to take in along Rally Gardens and then also one from London Road looking back um, back towards Rally Gardens so you can see it in a wider street context. Um, and just to point out that the proposed views um, do show the, the approved extension for the adjacent, um, adjacent sites. Um, so, the, so there's the, the proposed views that we've shown here have, um, show additional two storeys on this building, um, which has got planning approval. So just, just pointing out that that in case that's picked up the kind of difference between the existing... And that brings that up to how many storeys? Six. Six, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, I'll ask yeah. you five or seven other questions. Uh, could we start? <coughs> so it says that it's 34 flats, right? 36. 36 flats. What's the, um, the amount of time to really look at? What do you, what's the yield of people? Okay. Well, for PRS, we're looking at it could be in 42 to Probably maybe something four, four, yeah. four, 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 yeah. depending on the occupancy of the one that's presented. So it's thirty one beds? Yeah. And that being discussed in the odd regular Why 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 do you have that kind of rate? So um this scheme's uh fully PRS. So this yeah. jumping one and two beds, um, and that's been driven from advice from um agent that's been supporting the project. Mm -hmm. And there's a pretty up to date obviously local strategic has a needs assessment which identifies one and two beds as being the priority and particularly in value accessible locations like this. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Any questions? Yeah. 
more questions by phone. Yeah, I'm not changing heat and glass. Andre, I'm still for processing a few months, could you? Uh, I've got no questions. No, Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, can you explain to me how you deal with the harshness of that road along there? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so we've uh, put mainly, uh, at ground floor especially, put more other uses other than residential units so, mm -hmm. uh, on that frontage. So that the kind of main reason for having the core in this position was that it's facing onto the road and it's the north aspect. So we've got our, our core on this side, and then on the other side we've got our bikes and bin stores. So the only two units on Rally Gardens also have kind of their second other aspect at either end. Um, and again, uh, kind of going back to the kind of position of the building from the street edge and landscaping, we have worked really hard to, whilst also respecting distances to the rear, also sitting back as far as we can from the pavement edge as well, so creating generous, dis generous distances between the building line and the pavement. Um, and then, you know, making sure there's enough space for really generous um, landscaping between the building and the pavement edge there. So, what, is there a section between the back of your building and the block of flats at the back? Um, not a section. There is a there's context elevations, um, but trees are, do make that that relish quite hard to see here. Um, mm. I mean, there is a section you see in the planning application, but we've yeah, there's it's the contextual elevations. And what there. do you feel about the quality of space for everyone at the back? Of people. Um, we, so we have, so you see, as I've explained, the kind of measures we've made to maintain or keep distances um, at a minimum of 18 metres. We've also had our daylight and sunlight assessment done by an external consultant that um, does, it confirms that there's um, a, a very minimal impact on the existing units um, as a result of this building. Um, and that is largely because obviously at the moment there's nothing on that site, it doesn't pop up, so obviously building everything is going to have a have a minimal impact. Um, it's probably just worth yeah. making the point that the, the windows of the gate for the building that front onto our site are primarily to deal with kitchens mm -hmm. and bathrooms. Yeah. So the, the primary habitable spaces are facing the opposite direction. It's a deck access. It's it? deck access. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, very yeah. Good. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just questioning what the quality of space is going to be like for the people living, the ones you're building for. Um, actually, because it's quite a canyon. It's a very difficult site, don't get me wrong. And when I'm asking these questions because I grew up in council housing. So um, I specialise in housing. I think it's the most important building that we do people get a choice to live there. That's why I'm asking. Um, I question that quite the space inside there. I don't mind raising it for you to answer as to what you think about it that you're creating. Um, can I talk about the proposed? I think he's talking about the space between your building and the adjoining mm. development, particularly at the rear. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And, and this sunlight diagram kind of gives you a <coughs> cluster, gives you a hint of it. It's this, this sort of space, space between yeah. the two. Yeah. Yeah. That, this, this was one of the previous one we talked about, whether they could do a new right. open that space up. Yeah. That's where, that <coughs> where that, that right. comment came from. Um, so, the, the space between, so some of it is, uh, is quite community gardens, where they, they are very generous in width. Um, but the rest of the space is, like I said, it's it's, it's kind of parking area and some landscaping, mainly for kind of posted outlook for, for these units onto a bit of open space. Right. So it's not um, it's not like a shared community amenity space as such, but obviously it's really important for us to make it a, a positive place to look at on um, and great aspect from, from all the units at the rear down to the ground floor landscape space. Um, in terms of the quality of the spaces inside of the, for these rear apartments, as I said, they're all dual aspect and um, will receive um, sufficient daylight to you know, have access, as I said. Um, I think, think it's quite a strong objective to retain the trees that exist on that boundary yeah. as well. Um, mm -hmm. As a visual community, bearing in mind, obviously, that slightly reduces the usability of the space by keeping the yeah. trees, but I think as a visual community, that's a 
side there is the disabled one bed two person who has a window from a bedroom straight out. Yeah. So you're discriminating against disabled people. <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, we, did, well. we did actually try very hard, especially for this unit, to, to get an alternative arrangement that works, but <coughs> the, bits of unit, the extra separation space you need in the living, kitchen, dining area. Um, yeah, we just really struggled to make that work and also kind of giving priority to act garden access from the living space rather than the bedroom so we wanted to have the garden spaces to the side of the development rather than onto any garden so that I don't completely buy that because you've got resident storage what's causing you the difficulty is the resident storage in the bottom left hand corner of that plan and I'd have thought you'd probably have some control over where you, where you put the Resident storage. I mean, the kind of my view would be you could perhaps try a bit harder. It's easy for us to say, yeah. but mm, yeah. I mean, it might be worth trying a bit harder to because I think to make the disabled flat the least attractive flat in the scheme isn't good. It just isn't good, really. It ought to be the nicest flat in the scheme, really, yeah. to make up for the 
I mean, it's not such a massive problem. You know, lots of people coming in that way. So you do want people's flats to be right next to that entrance, but maybe it doesn't focus people enough on that entrance. Um, I, I, I mean, I think you've done yourself a bit of a, a bit of a disservice in one of your one of your sketches. I think it's that that one which shows the main entrance because th that would be a door. But I think this is the one, one I was looking at, which is like that's a lot. That's a lot of brick around yeah. the entrance, and if, if you don't take Claire's point about putting a window on there, then that's also one. So that's the other side, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a there's a lot of brick, a, lots of blank brick around a main entrance to a to a building. Uh, that, that that is it's difficult because it's, it's you can't put a window there because it's a you know. But then you create this massive sort of recess now, which you didn't really have before. You create a blank, a very blank wall. Yeah. So what? What was a recess in that sketch is, is, is now doing Yeah, it's, the, it's, 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 it's <laughs> slightly door. less. But it, what, the one next to it wouldn't be a window, it would be a louvre yes. door yeah. of some sort. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be the most inviting, you know, you're walking past what looked like plant rooms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what the solution is, it's just a, it's just a, a comment, really. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I, 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 like, I like the way it broke up the facade, I like the mid windows. Um, Okay. I think not to repeat anything everyone has just said. Um, I like the tall windows, I think you get a lot of light in there. You have a very difficult side in which to deal with. It does look slightly open, but if we were in Westminster we wouldn't be arguing and we say put more on top of it. Um, I am concerned about the quality of space at the back slightly, but you've answered the question. Um, fair enough keeping the trees, I think that's a good decision in order to help with that. Um, I quite like the way we've broken up the facade and the recesses and the balconies. I think pulling everything around to the side, I think that's very successful. I support Marcus's view about the disabled the wheelchair place um, moving that around. The form, the architecture breaking into two blocks and the gap between, that's really good. Um, I do question for all of your sites, because you go to such lengths to address the harsh noise of the road. Does that give you just a little bit of scope for the one or two bedrooms that are left to have a better sound quality, whether it's the triple glazing, whether it's acoustic glazing, or something in there, just for those odd situations? Not the whole building, but I think that was a very good point you raised earlier. Um, No, I have. Oh well. no, well I, well yeah, of course, Jack. I will do whatever you request. But I'm not as positive about this as my colleagues are. I, 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 I don't like the pitch roofs. I think the building that is already verging on too tall looks even taller with those pitch roofs. Um, and I think it's taking a kind of cottagey domestic language and putting it into a building that is a six story building which we will look back and we will say this is an absolutely classic New London vernacular facade. It's got all the elements. It's got the kind of playing with proportions, the panels of recessed brick, the Georgian type references and then it's got something by FAT architecture on the top. I, I mean, it's, or is it Aldo Rossi? I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm really not happy with the pitch roofs. If it was a three story building with the pitch roof, I would buy it because it would relate back to the domestic okay. vernacular of Mitchum. And I do think that the Mitchum Society will find this a bit tall. And I just wonder whether by putting pitch roofs on it, you're not actually making an edgy situation go over the edge and become sort of, you know, you might just about get away with it if you recess the top floor, if you did the kind of stepping back routine at six stories, but to put six stories and then a pitch roof, and then say, oh, but we're using the pitch roof, and then, but then there's no windows, there's no Right. There's nothing to evidence it. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't just like everything about it. I just think it's a bit too tall, and I think the pitch roofs are not helping. I also think 
And I agree with colleagues that it's a lot better than it was. And I agree with colleagues that the entrance in the middle is good. And I agree with colleagues that you should get these opportunities for little bathroom windows and there are some quite nice things happening. But there, for me, there is this danger that this building will feel like a great big lump, great big brown lump in the middle of Michigan. And so kind of that's where I am with it. Um, and I think it is, I think it is still, it feels slightly overdeveloped. A couple of colleagues picked up this one. It just feels as though we're trying to put too much on the site. Now whether, whether with, if you kind of reach into your architect's bag of tricks and use a bit of smoke and mirrors to achieve the same amount of accommodation but make it feel less, you know, even like a one meter setback on the top floor or maybe a change of material so you don't get this sheer wall of kind of 18 meters of, or 20 meters of brickwork from, from kind of ankle to sky. So that's my slight reservation on this one. But um, sorry to be the guy to prove that. Do you want to summarise? So summarise. Why no? Sorry. Just listen to what you're saying. Would that be sold if you took one story of the block on the right and added it to the one on the left and did something else? I think it would be sold if you took away those gable ends and started playing some of the same games that you're playing on the the other side that we had with these little yeah. coming backwards and forwards because that would begin to give the opportunity to step back. It's and I think for a scheme like this where you're 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 edging towards the limit in terms of height, I think it's vital that we have context sections mm. because there's a big difference between a public open space that has a proportion of kind of one and a half to one in terms of width to height and when it starts getting to be square mm -hmm. or in even worse when you start getting spaces that are taller than they're wide the psychological difference is huge mm. And the reason people set back up stories is because it actually works. It actually does give you the perception that the building is a story lower than it is. And the reason people go and use different materials, lighter, more sky-like, and less earthbound materials on the upper stories of the building is because it does give you the psychological feeling of lightness. So if you, for me, if you, if you got rid of the gable ends and you made the top story of both buildings set back even half a meter or zigzag or something and you made it out of light grey terracotta instead of dark brown brick you'd be half you'd be three quarters of the way there now that might play havoc with your flat layer so I can understand you know 51 meters of flat but suddenly it'd be a 46 meter flat but the question is, you know, at what point is it unacceptable? You know, you don't want to underdevelop these sites. And there is a public benefit in providing good quality housing, but then any developer can say that. Um, so this is the one that's much nearer the edge. Here. So anyway, other comments. Why no through roofs to be poor, or could we lower the wall? Potentially overdeveloped. We'd like to see sections. Pitches, roof pitches are expressed internally, which I think was light. Questions about the roof, questions about the wheelchair accessible flat. Suggest that you add bathroom windows in those little reveals. We like the access down the middle. You could either use less glass, or alternatively, you could use. Um, there are large areas of brick uh, which can work quite well with a good quality of brick. 
Uh, we like the reworking of the entrance. Perforated brick, you might want to use more. On the other hand, you might want to use less. <laughs> um, we like the tall windows. It looks overdeveloped. Concerned about the quality of space at the rear between Glebe Court and the new development. Is it a canyon? And I think a really good exploration of that in terms of sections would help explore. Um, and then sound quality for flats adjacent to the road. Could they get some extra attenuation or extra treatment? And then my little rant at the end, you know, have, is it is it too tall? Question mark. And I'd be really interested in colleagues' mm. comments on my comments, actually, because I came on last. I mean, do you agree with me? I think, so, so I think in the model again, mm. the, is that, that showing without the extra two stories on the neighboring yeah, building? Yeah. So the two yeah, stories on this bit. I think you've made me, um, I think you've said what I didn't want to say, to be honest, in a sense. You, I do think it is slightly overdeveloped, but like I say, I, I lived at Steve in a city where they just pack it. For the but that's the city, that's yeah. not well, Mitchell. The, the yeah. Mitchell Heritage Society is would really reject very much to be, you know, because it is a mm. pretty village, you know. Yeah. Is there enough scope in your modelling to retweak it and reposition and cut it? Mm. Stage of being yeah, submitted for planning, so it's it, it's just um, within the. I, I, I think the stage the stage we're at, obviously it's it's fixed design for the purpose of submitting as a planning application. We will be getting feedback from the Mitchum Society. We'll be getting feedback from masters um, over the next you know four to, four to six weeks, and I think we'll take all that feedback as a whole, and depending on what that says, take a decision as to whether any changes are necessary. Right. Um, I'm just about time. Could I have an idea what Marcus's village is? Uh, can I open it to the rest of the panel? Um, you haven't. I think we Well, I know it's not great, so. Could I get ideas from Amber? Yeah, all of them were Amber. Yeah, it was Amber. It was Amber. It was Amber. If it's taken as a whole, then we can't discount what, what Marcus has said in his concerns. About the, about the building behind, about the, 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 the quality of the land. For so I'm going to try and get uh, a, a combined verdict here. Of all the schemes I've seen, it's the one I'm most least happy with. Um, and I'm very pleased that Marcus was able to articulate that for me. I'll say that quite openly. I mean, to be fair, last, last time we gave it an amber, it was probably mostly because of the proximity to the Glebe Court. Buildings, which is why the U shape mm -hmm. thing came up. Maybe it needs to have something in that section to show. It's better than it was. The question is is it sufficiently better than it was for us to give a literally a green light through planning? I mean, most, most of the things that are like, that are a lot better are planned things. Mm -hmm. It's not really the shape of the building that's, although they've broken it apart, it's still fundamentally the same height and the same mm -hmm. sawtooth roof. Mm. Whether it stays at amber or whether there's <coughs> sufficient 
agreements to take it to agree. I think it's an absolutely clear amber. I think all of us are thinking that. Yeah. Is there so anyone reading that? Yeah. Okay, so Andre's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But I think when we write our notes, there will be quite a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not um, bad. It's yeah, bad. no, it's not bad. It's, it's just, it's got... And there's also further uh, balcony spaces on the, the two floors as well. 
looking out into the kind of more communal landscape space at the heart of the site. So that's, um, I guess, kind of the, the summary of the design development of the houses. Um, in terms of the apartment block, I mean, this wasn't really a comment from DRP, but the, the layout has changed um, quite a bit. So we wanted, um, previously we had an access down the side, but that would have impacted the list of wall. So we've changed the access arrangement. So now the L-shaped block at ground floor has a route through it, um, which means that um, this part of the boundary wall, which is listed, is kept completely intact. It's not touched. Um, there's a kind of new entrance through here, and then a new bit of wall built here, which is visible. It, so this, although it looks, this is the listed wall, and this is the new bit of wall. So it, and again, in the design development, we've looked to pick up um, elements of design from around uh, Cannon's place. Um, such as the kind of dip in the wall. Um, uh, in terms of refuse strategies, a quick one on that. Um, it's now is a lot more straightforward, and this kind of open route through has made that um, much more simple. So there's a, a, a communal bin store for the kind of top few um, townhouses, as a kind of collection point, and then a communal bin store at the ground floor of the apartments, which is kind of easily accessible for all residents. Um, and now I'll just move on then to the kind of wider context um, and heritage setting. So um, as we've been refining the design, we've been obviously very um, considerate of how this building is viewed within the kind of wider context. So these two sketch views, um, so this first one's taken from um, behind Cannon's house, so looking back towards our site. Um, and this second one's taken from the playing fields opposite Park Place. So um, I think uh, at the last DRP, the scheme we presented was three stories, but we've maintained that height um, to make sure it always kind of sits below the tree canopies. Um, are those in, uh, illustrations in your pack? Or, or? So they are, but they were black and white in the pack. We've added colour. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so you can effectively see the before and after and see that they don't have an kind of overbearing effect on the kind of surrounding landscape views. Um, in terms of kind of, so this board's called Heritage Response. Have you found them in the middle there? Um, in terms of it, okay, I'll talk a bit more generally about the Heritage Response as well. Um, we, in, as we start to refine the architecture, um, again, some additional sketches that were in the booklet that are on these boards, but just started to show how, in terms of kind of developing the architectural and elevational details, we very and much drew here, yes, yeah. uh, we drew from the Georgian proportions of the listed buildings um, obviously adjacent to our sites, but interpreted them in a, a slightly more modern way. So just picking up on a few of these principles, um, considering how the proportion of windows changes as you go up the building, um, looking at different ways of grouping building uh, windows vertically, so <coughs> two or three, um, depending on how the internal arrangement works. Um, obviously, the terrace, the terrace of townhouses is very much red as a terrace. Um, we've achieved that through the um, kind of inset of EST, which breaks up each house and emphasise that with the, um, the different parapet height as well. Um, and we're keen to kind of continue a similar language um, through to the apartment block as well, so using um, kind of uh, kind of recessed brick, kind of shadow gap, and um, to identify the different apartments beyond. Um, other kind of more more detailed elements. So um, picked up kind of parapet details. So again, uh, not an exact copy of the kind of cornice on the uh, adjacent listed buildings, but kind of a more modern interpretation of the kind of soldier course on the, the top of both blocks. Um, soldier course on the kind of um, around windows. Um, and then for, for the metal work again, um, using kind of metal railings, um, which we've always looked to express with a similar kind of proportion as the adjacent windows. Um, and I think I've mentioned before, but in terms of kind of picking up some of the details of the walls around the surrounding landscape, which we've picked up kind of on the kind of front elevation, but also on the rear um, of the townhouses that face the um, Toby Carberry car park. We've kind of introduced that little dip, which is quite um, a key characteristic of the surrounding landscape as well. 
And in terms of uh, materiality, we've kept it quite subdued and just using one um, brick throughout. Um, and we've drawn inspiration again from Park Place, which is adjacent to the building, with this kind of yellowy, um, warm buff kind of brick, which has got quite a nice variation um, across this as well. Thank you. Questions? Michael, I've started. I was just looking at it. It's along the river. It's almost someone's house now, so they could be responsible for getting up there and doing stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, they have. Each each house has an individual, individual access patch for uh, access and maintenance, but there's nothing else like that. Um, has that much backup? Um, yes, I think it varies. So, um, this, this element here has, has the 1100 parapet and that's where the access is and that's where the, the plant terminates so that's where we need access. But can I get to the bit with the other parapet? Um, it's going to be by a, um, a reach in uh, the old king of gutters. From no, but it's not physically get to that. No, no, no we're actually there. putting a, a chip on that sort of system but it seems a lot more than yeah, it has. So I, I think we would probably be at a, a uh, reach and wash. I mean, will, this, will this be managed as a development? Yes, yeah. okay. okay. So just, I mean, something like that. So, yes. So, these houses are. Oh, sorry. Where is that? Why would it serve? Yeah. Just the town houses. Just the town houses. Yeah, just the town houses. Environmental PRS. Another question. You said about the bin stores. Mm -hmm. All your plans show a bin and bike store in front of all of them. So, yeah. But you said that there's communal bin stores yeah. for the first few, and then. Yes, yeah. So, um, again, due to kind of travel restrictions with um, refuse lorry um, residents, um, this kind of bin collection point, so that's where the new bins would be carried, is there. Um, and that's within the compliant distances of the top few townhouses. Um, oh, okay, so the bins, so the, the set of bins were in there, in yes. front of that thing, they just moved the collection data yeah, back to that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm sure that was like a, where it's their not bins were. No, 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 they have, it's, yeah, that's for the weekly collection. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, same question about the roof, but we'll do okay, yeah. Um, Is there, a reason, is there a reason why you went flat roofs in this area? Um, Given that most of our own It's primarily in relation to um, the adjacent park place, so although it has got a hip truth beyond, but the, the parapet's line is straight, and that's that's what's red. So it's very much in, in context of the rest of the building. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Why aren't the roofs used as roof gardens? I can't quite understand the answer to that question, which I thought that's what you were in. Well, yeah, it could be a for someone. Obvious. I'm not sorry I shouldn't say words like that. It's weird. It's not. 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 Security. The difficulty is, is going to be the height, of, the absolute height of these buildings next to the listed building. Mm. So I can see that putting little pepper pots on top of it would be problematic. Any more questions? Or? No, just that. No, just that. Maybe. Not this question. Please. Thank you. Thank you.
I question, I question your heritage consultant, the Peter Stewart Consultancy, coming to the conclusion that there is no harmful effect at all by your entire development on any of the heritage assets around it. And the reason I question that is that I do this sort of thing for a living. Um, I'm advising on about half a dozen grade one and grade two style listed building major developments. And you can argue that architecturally it does no harm to put a highly visible housing development on what was previously a garden and a nursery and a glass house is hidden behind a garden wall. You can argue that it's architecturally an improvement. But I don't think you can... I think it's a pretty hard thing to argue that there's no harm to its historic significance to put a big development in an area that was previously gardens and greenhouses. And I was expecting, and I think before you came in, I was expecting, I hadn't spotted this statement that this eminent consultant has concluded that your building has no heritage harms whatsoever to any heritage asset, neither the conservation area nor the three listed structures in whose setting this building is. I think that's that's a pretty bold statement for Peter Stewart Consultancy to make. And the trouble is that you're only listen to if your advice is credible. And uh, I think it's dangerous for a consultant to sort of say very black and white things like that, which are, I would think are pretty difficult to sustain. I would argue that however good the building is, you there is a degree of harm, his, 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 there is a degree of harm to the historic significance. Possibly not the architectural significance. That's something that we can argue about in the comments section. So I question that conclusion by your funding consultant. It's in. I only just spotted it when I was sort of reading the small section. It's 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 a you know I've I've come, I have come across it before where someone concludes heritage in respect to the design and the relationship between the proposed developments the effect will be entirely positive. Will be entirely positive. So... Okay. Oh, could you open it up to the comments and main review stage? And we'll just yeah, I'll comment on it, but I just wanted to question it. This is a question... I question his conclusion. <laughs> Would you like to answer that? <laughs> um, I guess it's hard to question on his behalf. He's not here. Um, but we do obviously that was just an extra, that was simply an extract of the conclusion. Um, yes, but a, it's a pretty straightforward conclusion. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's well, again, I won't speak for for Peter Stewart Consultancy either, but it is a kind of a balanced conclusion. So on the basis of there being, in their view, more of a positive effect than a negative one, there is an overall positive effect. That's their conclusion. Okay. And uh, maybe we didn't put that across clearly enough in the sum in the introduction. Well, there is a difference between saying there are no harms yeah, sure. and saying there are some harms and there are some positives and taken on balance, the overall effect is positive. Yeah. And, I think and that believe me, the there are many, many hours of many, many learned people having long discussions about how you weigh these things up. But the National Planning Policy Framework is pretty clear. If there are any harms, any harms, you look, number one, for justification, clear and convincing justification, which you may well have. You then assess the harms. Are they, are they substantial harms or are they less than substantial harms? And if they are, then you weigh up the public benefits, which is why I'm interested in whether this is public housing or private housing, because that's potentially a public benefit. 
public house and then weigh that public benefit against the harm. I'll let you come back to that on the, on the comments uh, main review station. Uh, could we any questions? Yeah, mm. yeah? Right. On to the main review. Uh, Marcus, would you like to start? Yeah, well, I kind of almost said all I have to say. I, I question it. I will. I tried to look up this because I was told it was a live application. I tried to look it up on the web in order to kind of delve into the heritage aspect because from my point of view that's the only that's the only real sticking point. I mean I think it's a nice piece of architecture. I think you've done everything we asked you to do last time. Colleagues may pick up kind of points, which is absolutely fine. But kind of my area of expertise is, is heritage. And until I saw that phrase, I was really expecting, when I did unearth this document, that I would get something that weighed up the positives and negatives, identified that there were inevitably some harms, and the principal harm, as I see it, is simply the fact of putting a whole load of houses in what was previously a garden. Even if it's successful architecturally, remember what we're trying to protect in heritage assets is cultural significance, which is customarily looked at in terms of historic and, aesthetic, historic and architectural significance, and then sometimes broken down into the four broad herons, headings of aesthetic, historic, evidential, and communal. And there's a kind of framework within which we discuss these things. And it's, it's really incredibly rare when you have a development that has no harmful effects whatsoever to cultural significance. And as I say, the harm here is that what was once a garden and green fields gave a sort of rural setting to the cannons when it was out in the spit. And Mitchell was a sweet little North Surrey village without any six story housing with or without pitch roofs in it. And then, as Mitchell has developed, this particular heritage asset has suffered somewhat from having a the leisure centre put in its grounds <coughs> and there has been a little bit of suburban encroachment but not much and then you have a, a highly visible densification and putting residential uses there that's got to be harmful at some level so what do you do, you mitigate the harms by making it a really really nice building and by carefully studying what you're sitting next to. And that definitely mitigates the harm and makes that harm less. And you do what, I mean, I wonder what our lovely conservation officer at Merton is going to think of this, because kind of the further you get away from high densities of historic buildings, the more conservative conservation officers are. They're very protective. They want to keep things more or less as they are. I think if you were in Oxford, which is where I do most of my work, you know, you, we'd be having quite a kind of serious discussion about this. We'd be looking at public benefits. We're looking at, you know, how will the college survive? What's the role of the elite institutions in the nation of mass higher education? Blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, are you going to increase public access? Are you views and so on and so forth, but we, we have to acknowledge that there's some harm. <coughs> so I think you need to find some, I, I would, I will read your document, but, but if it's not robust, then I think the consultant is not doing himself any favours, because as I say, you're only as good as your advice, it doesn't matter what letters you have after your name. And I would expect a, a, an application like this to conclude that there, whilst there are some benefits, there are inevitably some harms. And the principal harm is that you're changing the character of the space by putting a whole load of housing there, which will change the ambience of the space, that it will you know, make it more developed, more urban, etc. You mitigate it by designing a good building, and then you go and then you conclude that it's less than a substantial harm, which I would certainly agree with. You're not demolishing the cannons, you're not creating a great big lake or a so what you now have to find is, is your public benefit to so that way okay. that's all I would say but there's enough to be said about the context I think that as a group as a kind of group of houses and flats that works really well I really like this kind of mm. cul-de-sac street and I think the square works I think, yeah it's a really good composition of people 
people. I can see people having a really great communal time there. And because they have so much green space around them, you know, I think the lack of gardens is sort of okay. I think the um, townhouses potentially, uh, uh, again, I really like the facade and what's the whole relate, and there's a really open kitchen living room there that's overlooking that sort of continental few three nose. I think they're working in that small context. Potentially at the back, it, it, it's a huge amount going on, isn't it? Maybe that is slightly sort of too busy, too, men, too much volumetrics playing games played. And again, I think inside that might work and with a roof terrace that's a good for the national sitting there and looking out. But yeah, I think the, the windows at the back and the way it's uh, sculptured slightly less than simple. But generally I really like it. I love to live there.
Yeah. It's sort of military, isn't it? It's yeah, like a Roman that's it. Sort of yeah. I, mean, I, I, I agree because you know I like I like, I like the front. Um, I like the big window. It's lucky it's in this area. People can sit there. You can not forget that social behaviour and stuff. And I, I appreciate all the changes you've made from the original school game. You can't bore all that all that good stuff. Um, and well done for talking as well. Again, for schemes. <laughs> give you enough credit for you stood up there the whole time and you sit down. Um, I've got, I've got just a couple of comments on um, the, the, the news, the other news, <coughs> the terrorist um, layout of the final plan. Um, when you come in, and I think it's, it's a consequence of why I was asking about the installs, when, when you come in, you're, you're sort of faced with this, this corridor that brings you into, mm. into the unit, which, if, if it's anything like my house, you're going to have a load of coats on that left and right hand wall and you're barely going to get out. I mean, my, my corridor is significantly wider than that. Like, it's still a struggle with shoes and all that kind of stuff, pile on the floor. Um, yeah, and it's a six bed sandwich. Where are the kids? Where are the kids' coats? Mm. Where are the kids' the scooter? You know, there's no room in that hall for, for anything at all. Um, and it's a consequence of the fact that you've got this by bin store area at the front, which is just squeezed it all in. Because everything else in the flat is quite nicely proportioned and spacious and stuff. And it's just this hall. You, you know, it's 1,200 wide, narrowing down to probably a, a metre as you get towards the stairs. Because uh, you put your 1,200 turn circle there. And it's, it just feels very enclosed when you're coming into what is otherwise quite a large flat. You know, is it six? How many beds? Six persons. 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 Try and get out of there of the day. I mean, I've got two kids, and it's it's, it's hard enough at the best of times. Um, I, yeah, that that's my. And also, I'm a, I'm tall. You're tall. I don't know how much headroom you have underneath that stair for that toilet. Yeah. I think I'd be. I think I'd be doing <laughs> doing this or, or or this. I mean, you could just swap them over and have a sink on the side wall, mm -hmm. something like that. But um, yeah, that wouldn't work. No, you wouldn't get a stand on it. Well, it's it's seven, eight. Eight. There's, there's, there's six, there's steep stairs, stairs, I've counted yeah. steps, there's 15 steps, so you can get, if it's 3.1 for the floor, then at 200 and something, so as long as you're getting 40 degrees. You can degree, count so, a bit of the mob like that, and we've tested in sections, so. I don't believe you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten risers. You only need to be able to stand. No, well, the, the, the 11 risers onto where you stand. So you've got the thickness of the stair, and the rise yeah. is going to be, what, 170? No, they're, well, they're, they're bigger than that. So they're 50 steps, they're, two, they're 200 and something. Rise. Yeah. They can't be that. Maybe 220, I think. Yeah. Okay. But it's still above the toilet. It might be 1500, 1600. Which is regulation. But then when you're, when you're a tall man like me, it may be regulation, but I go to enough toilets that have that kind of, I can't really stand there Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, they're, 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 they're my, yeah. Uh, and also the, 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 the hatch for the roofs in the bedroom, which I thought was a little bit unfortunate. If they did it. Just, just, yeah, you have loft hatches, you have loft hatches in the bedroom, so maybe, maybe it's not an issue, but you had a, you had a corridor, unfortunately that went out into the, the lower roof, which, which you can't get to. Whether that was an option getting onto that roof and then get onto the roof. Um, but yeah, just that, that, I mean, I just think that's a real tight entrance there, so I'm not going to worry too much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's quite interesting that you've had all these hard urban sites and you've done these really hard buildings mm -hmm. and some of them have been perforated and split and opened them. It's got a really lovely site plan and it works really well and everyone's cognitive of it. You know, news, it's going to wander around Chelsea and have a look there, so that's wonderful news is there that work. Sort out, something like that. <coughs> what I'm going at is the you've created a wall of the building. You've gone through a lot of detail on the front elevation, it's very subtle, the brickwork, the proportions, and that's that's all great. But then really it's at the end of the day, it's just this big solid wall with a couple of um castellations in it. And perhaps, particularly at the back, it could have been a lot lighter. The same if you're replacing greenhouses in the garden, then why isn't it more permeable? It just seems like you've missed a trick where you've had you've got free opportunity 
in the architecture which you're creating. I get what, where you've come from, but it just seems like you could just have a little bit more openness with it. The same. So you, yeah, maybe the heritage has not helped in that sense, yeah. and you felt we're in the nest of these Georgian buildings, so we got to sort mm. of copy them. Mm. I mean, if you did, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to tell you how to design your building, but like I say, you go with the curve, you go with the existing wall, you pull it, you've opened it, it's all really lovely, and it all works, and then you get to this building, and it's like, <coughs> it's like well, where's all of that lovely openness and feeling? And, if this was on one of the other sides, you probably would have made the gaps between the, and the recesses open and free. You probably would have made it all glass, for example. And you still could have played your little games with your Georgian designs. <coughs> so it's like there's a, another level of subtlety and lightness and things that's going on. Because, I mean, I could be completely wrong, but to me, it seems like you've got these four sides You've got this architectural language, you're doing all this brilliant stuff with brick, and it's all lovely, you know the detail, that's not a question. And then you've got to another side and gone, yeah, this is the language we're using, rather than going, oh, hang on a minute, there's this lovely heritage space in this green space, there's another building here and another one there, and how are we going to appreciate it, and let it all flow and see it and there. And if you, if you had to do that terrace in the countryside, with all green and forests around it, would you have made it that solid? That's the last one question. And then the houses have put so much work on them and the modelling. I then look at the block of flats. And you've done this that architecture. Oh, a little bit of brickwork here, a little bit of brickwork there, and another thing there. And I feel it's a bit too solid when it doesn't need to be. And then going to the rear. Yeah, and everyone's picked up on the rear. That I mean, now I've looking from the distance and I've gone closer, but it does feel. It reminds me of some of the Islington townhouses, which have been designed the way they should be because they're close to somewhere else. And I just question: Does it need to be so solid? Don't get me wrong; it's lovely architecture, but in the context of where it is, it seems there's a lot of missed opportunity. In terms of just onto the kind of openness and moving through the site we have we have really kind of emphasized the, the kind of groups out towards the yeah. open space yeah. and, uh, towards kind of absolutely and and we have quite purposely created a, a bit more of a solid back because it is onto a car park so just kind of considering mm -hmm. the kind of quality of spaces especially at ground floor the on the other side so yeah, yeah so we've got uh, the uh, car park on this side oh, okay. so, Right. Facing on, so that that's what the kind of this elevation oh, okay. is facing onto. Mm. So, right. um, so we kind of purposely have got, got a high level window okay. at the back there, on the right. kitchen, just to make more sense. So, so that image somewhere as well. Any more? No, no. Oh, the only other thing is, like I said originally about the bridge space, the private gardens. I certainly know mm. my developers, we would have. Put a retractable roof on there, the staircase up there, and the like, hey, could she? <laughs> Marcus, could you please do a quick summary before you? Can I say something nice before I say the summary? Um, yeah. Thinking of what Andre has been saying, a precedent did occur to me, which is the Royal Naval Dockyard at Sheerness, which is another Georgian building. Um, a kind of walled guard, garden, well, Georgian building's got like a grade two stylist of Georgian mansion, and then a terrace of offices, um, houses, which I think is grade two, which kind of march down the hill. So it has, it kind of has a faintly kind of military naval feel to it. I mean, what happens is people think Georgian architecture equals Georgian terraces and Georgian squares and mm. Georgian London and, you know, so on. I was also thinking about if it was in the country, what would you do? You often, you often see a little row of workers' cottages in the country and you mm. think it's like they just someone's taken a bit of Coronation Street and dropped yeah. it there, you know. So, I'm not completely against that. And, I mean, the, the point I would make coming back to my earlier sternness about the heritage. I mean, 
if, God forbid, your heritage consultant has slightly rosy tinted it, what I suggest you should do is look for some public benefits. And it's evidence-based heritage now. It's not enthusiasm-based. It's evidence-based. And what you need is just a lot of them. Not all of them have to be very big public benefits, but you need like 20 instead of 3. And that reinforces what colleagues have been saying about things like biodiverse roofs. That is a public benefit. And if you want to get this thing over the line, and if you accept my argument that there must be some harm, then let's put those public benefits in. So, summary. What's that? No, I just think I was going to say something other positive. You know, that the fact that it's a car park, it has those terrace houses around the corner. And I personally, I'm actually, as you said, you're the specialist, there will be some harm, but I can't actually see that much harm considering the corner situation of it mm -hmm. and where it sits towards the relationship to the others. Well, I think we'll come more or less agreed on that. I mean, it sounds a bit grumpy at the beginning, but all the point I was making is there must be some harm. Mm -hmm. And I think we need that public benefits to outweigh those harms. Sell them for a lot of money so you can build more. That's what every developer no. says is a public benefit. Make me rich. It's not a public benefit in itself. It's an arguable public benefit to make the council rich no. or to pay for, you know. And it's not a very strong public benefit. It's about weighing them. Yeah, you might you want, might have 30 public benefits. Some will have more weight than others. But anyway, mm. we, we need some public benefits. Yeah. Uh, we think it's well designed. Some colleagues were not quite a fan of the house types, felt it was a bit urban. Three-story flat roofs. Should, should the buildings be cuter and quieter and more rural? Question mark. Um, <coughs> Roofs, biodiverse brown roofs would be a good thing, at a minimum, I think one of my colleagues said, and preferably to use them as amenity space, private amenity. Treatment of road, could it feel more like a shared surface? Uh, maybe planters at the front. <coughs> a bit heavy, feels like an Olympic Village muse. The width of the entrance hallway in the muse houses, with six persons living in this with their shoes coats and scooters while they trip up over each other. A wall of building, could it be lighter? Maybe miss the trick to sort of take it beyond the Georgian Terrace thing to something else, question mark. Where is the lovely openness? We like the curves and the flats feel too solid. That's what I got. Okay. Most of the things. So, can we please go on to the verdict? Again, I'll open it to the panel. Uh, we're discussing so we can come with the right. combined start. Just a caveat again, what we did with the discussion we had for the verdict for the last time it was an amber last time. I think kind of like similar form, generally speaking. Um, uh, so, it's a question of whether it's gone backwards, whether it's the same, or whether you feel the improvement is taken from the number to the point. I mean, that summarises how you want to I think it's improvement. I think there are heritage issues, but you have got, you have got heritage mm. advice. Whether Marcus thinks that's incorrect, you well, have I haven't got, read it yet. So. You have got heritage advice. Yeah. He thought it was okay. <coughs> I'm absolutely no expert in it. So I can only go by, uh, we, we used to be a steward for our heritage as well. So, you know, if he says it's all right, then kind of what's, you know. Uh, I think Andre has some reservations as well. You'd have to articulate them for me, I'm kind of hmm. like a punch truck. Um, my reservations are solidified back. I think there's a lot of um, nice finesse in the architecture. I think it could move. It could be applied a bit more across the board and opened up. Um, and listening to context of one of our rare historical buildings, then how well does it set it as a context? 
has improved from what it was. I didn't see the one before. I'm just looking at it with fresh eyes. I've got mixed. For me, if I was looking at it from the beginning, I would probably give it an M. But <coughs> if it was going through a pre-app and I had confidence that you were going to read detail and do things and open up, I'd probably move more towards a green. Um, and that's my neutral view. I think the house types are brilliant. I think they're really good, well designed, actually. Mm -hmm. The sweet and shapes that you've made of them. I think the outside spaces work really well. Um, it's just a row of solid row, which is what I question. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the impression that if I remember before, it seems like it's still an amber. Yeah. It mm -hmm. hasn't, hasn't got fundamentally worse, so it's not regular, fundamentally. Okay. So has it improved sufficiently to give it a green, or is it still an amber? Well, I feel slightly trapped by our traffic light system because I think it's a it's a greeny amber. I mean, the questions I've raised about heritage are actually questions, as you say, that can be questioned and answered against the MPPF. You can just let That's people weigh the harms against the benefits. Okay. And the local planning authority has a duty to do that. And it will so you're that. saying it needs to justify it? The two things, so you have to justify it. Benefit. You have to justify it in the first place. <coughs> and any harm has to be justified. And then you weigh the harms against the public benefits, provided they're less than substantial. And I'm sure they're less than substantial, and it's about weighing harms against benefits. And it is a well-designed scheme. So I would say it's a, it's a greeny amber. It's no such thing. Or, a, or a, an ambery green. <laughs> 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 so the way we do this before, let's say we've got the green is that if you think it's um, more an amber or a green, well, let's just say one approach which happens relatively often is it's amber, but you think it could almost be a red or it could almost be a green, and the almost bit comes out in the detail of the notes, but you still give it an amber. I think that's what we should do here, and I think the way you write the notes will help amplify that. Okay, so you're happy with an amber in that respect? Yes, okay. Okay. I, I go around the table. Green. green. I think that's where. As uh, Paul says, it's for the notary. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so we call it amber towards green, and the towards green comes out in the notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you all see the notes, you will get a chance to add your comments uh, and to check whether the emphasis is correct in the notes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think you should be commended for presenting four Thank you, well done. Up there on your own. You've done really well. Okay. Yeah.